Yeah. When you get your hands free. August or something. Yeah. They already uh, have a new uh, new one picked out, I guess. They have? I think so, yeah. Well, I hope so. I hope it ain't that lady in this Oh, Desiree? Yeah. I hope not too because she's a she, she's a psycho. Yeah, she's a whack job. I like her. You're on the internet. You heard us. <laughs> you didn't get the picture because you're That's true. My ah, name is Nancy Case. Uh, now watch what you say on the internet. Let us go pick your old man behind us. Wake him up. Hi lady. Uh talking on the internet. I bet you go to work. I'm not working. <laughs> I'm just sitting here watching TV. Yes, yeah. I see that. Yes, Miss Wilson. 
Um, Saturday, April 13th, we are to take dinner to Family Promise at Frankfurt Plains um, for the homeless. If anybody would like the opportunity to do that, um, please see me after church. Okay. And this is the last Sunday to order hoagies. You can call me and order them over the phone if you want during the week up till probably about Wednesday, Thursday. We're doing very well. We have quite a few orders. Good. And all the all the funds go to finance. Not finance, uh, outreach. And then this Saturday coming up, we're putting them together? This Saturday coming up, we're putting them together. So you can pick them up Saturday. The, the church will be open all afternoon. I'll, I'll leave the door unlocked. Or you can pick them up Sunday morning. They'll be in the refrigerator with your name on them. Okay. So I have an announcement. I'm hoping, I'm very much hoping I'm wrong by now. Um, but I hadn't heard, so I'm assuming I'm still right. One of the young fellows that I work with named Shane has been missing as of last night for 40 hours. Um, he's 18, so he's legally an adult, so they had to wait before they could really do anything with the police. But he didn't show up at school on Friday. His phone was dead. He didn't come to work Friday or Saturday. His mother has not seen him since sometime Thursday night. He lives up in this area, up towards Montague. Um, we don't know, he's, this is not like him. He's very, a very responsible young man. We've never had any issues with him. Um, so we're unfortunately fearing the worst. But um, I'm hoping that by the time I go back to work in the next day or two, they'll say, oh yeah, he showed up, he's okay. Um, but so far we don't know. I've asked several of the people who come into the store, the EMTs and the state police, if they, you know, came across a car on the side of the road with a young boy in it or something, but they haven't, which is good. Uh, but we definitely want to keep him and his family in, in, in your prayers. His name is Shane, and just that we hope that God returns him safely uh, to his family. We don't know why. Like I said, he could have run off, could just be hanging out with his friends. No one knows. Shane. I don't, unfortunately, I don't even know the last name. I just know his first name. I've always called him by his first name. But uh, it's, as of last night when I left work, it was 40 hours that we hadn't heard from him. So, you know, we're very concerned. So we ask that you keep him and his family in your prayers and that hopefully next week I'll be able to give you good news. Um, I don't know. So. All right. that... Rather sad. No, do we have any birthdays or any anniversaries that we want to raise up? Do we have any joys? I have a joy. Good. We need um, one. My niece and her daughter were in a very serious car accident in Frankfurt um, by Lake Owasa the other night. And um, it was a three car horrendous accident. And she walked away and her daughter. Um, all the cars were totaled, the helicopters had to come. Um, the worst injuries, I believe, were two broken legs of the driver. And it was a young driver, you yeah. know, so. But for the most part, people were all right. Yeah. 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 Good. It was good news. But definitely we'll be uh, saying a prayer of thanks to God for that. Yeah. That's why we have car insurance. Yeah. You know, cars and houses and things can be replaced, soul mills can be replaced. Mm -hmm. People. Not so easy. I have a joy. A couple yes. of joys. Um, Donnie and Eileen's daughter. Um, yeah. <laughs> Denise. Denise. Thank you. <laughs> right out of my head. Denise uh, is engaged. Okay. And she'll be married next year. And Ronnie and I saw our great grandchildren. Wow. Uh, Corin turned one. Oh, Jake's wow. little boy. You're there for his birthday, and we went to see Ryan and Morgan and his two little girls in Raleigh. So we had a, a good weekend. <coughs> we also had somebody come and fix our dock <coughs> and fix our television, which I don't care about the TV, but the, the wire was laying in the street. So yeah. Um, so we had a good, a good work um, and a good visiting time in North Carolina. Good. Well, glad we're glad to say. Yeah. Tell them you've done your best when next time you talk to them, and congratulations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. I've known that for a while, but I didn't know it was in the paper. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm 81 years old, and all of a sudden I have a... 
things things get forget forgotten sometimes. It's called That's all right. time and old age. <laughs> That's okay. All right then. Those are all the announcements. Let us proceed to enter our worship. <laughs>
hymnal for our prayer of confession. One heart and one voice. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And if you will rise, if able, and turn to page 881 for our Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
So we can't invite Amelia up. She's playing hooky today. But she's allowed. But as we're old children of God, we still have a children's message. And it will tie in, of course, with our sermon. How many had brothers or sisters growing up? Right, folks. And I'm sure there were times when that you were jealous of your brother and sister, right? And I'm sure there were times they were jealous of you. Never. Right. Well, that's good. <laughs> my sister had to grow up uh, in the shadow of an older brother who was, you know, well liked by his teachers in school. And whenever she had one of the teachers I had, she heard about it. And uh, she didn't like that. She was very happy when she would get a teacher that I did not have. But uh, the funny thing about growing up was that in my mother's eyes, I was always the bad child. I was the one who was going to run away with the family fortune and spend it in uh, poor living. And my sister was the good little girl. She did everything mommy and daddy wanted. She was going to be their pride and joy. Little did they know what she would turn out to be 15, 16, 17 years down the line. And I'm not going to go into the details because my mother sometimes watches this and I don't want to uh, reveal any sibling secrets. But she was not as pure and innocent as they thought. She, she, uh, she had a good cover. And there were many a time that she was the prodigal child, that she was the child that was drifting away from the family, you know, forging her own course. And that I ended up turning out to actually be the better child, much to my mother's surprise. When I, when I was getting ready to move out, she was all upset. I said, look, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I've never been arrested. I haven't gotten anyone pregnant. You did okay. Relax. You don't have to worry. And the reason I'm telling you this is because we all go through the various roles in the story of the prodigal son. Sometimes, often, we're the young child who's the sinner and who runs away from home to waste his fortune. Sometimes we're the faithful older sibling who stays behind and helps the family tend the farm, does the things that they're supposed to do and are responsible <coughs> for, and is the good quote unquote child, but still might have some jealousy towards the freedom that their sibling has. And sometimes we get to play the role of the parent, who's always loving of their child no matter what, always forgiving. Doesn't mean they're always happy with their child's choices, but they love them, and they cannot turn away from them, no matter what they do. The important thing to remember is that as we go through these different phases, and sometimes repeat them through our life, it's not just a one, two, three, sometimes we go back and forth. That we have to be as gentle and kind to the sinners as we would want them to be when we're the sinners. We have to live by the golden rule. Treat others as you want to be treated. Love everyone as you want to be loved. <coughs> if we do that, then no matter what our role is, at that point in our life as a prodigal story, we will please our Father in Heaven. And that really should be our ultimate goal, is to not sin and to do good by our Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. <coughs>
The Gospel reading this morning is Luke 15, verses 11 through 32, found on page 73. The parable of the prodigal and his brother. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant, di distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the, that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to be one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs, He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But then, okay. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. Will I, I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked, what's going on? He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen. For all of these years, I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat, so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when <coughs> this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, <clears throat> you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and he has been found. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And our preparation, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Number 348.
streams sometimes how, how the message ties into current events and what's going on around us in our lives. We started the service this morning talking about a young man who was missing. That hadn't happened Monday when I picked out this lectionary text. But it's exactly the type of situation that this text talks about. There's a reason that this text is put in during Lent. Can you guess why? That's where it's lost. Because Lent is a season in which we generally become keenly aware of our lost status, of our sinful nature, and we spend six weeks in preparation to atone and to ask forgiveness of God on Easter morning. This is the Lenten story. It's the story of each and every one of us. And it's a story of an underdog. And we love underdog stories. We love it when the one who the odds are stacked against actually manages to succeed and to thrive. Because it gives us hope that when we're in that situation, and we so often find ourselves in it, that we can succeed and can thrive. Now most of you probably don't watch or haven't read the Game of Thrones series. It's, uh, it's in its last year. Good. Emily? Oh, Emily, I had hope for you. You have to watch it, young lady. Anne and I love it. The books are good too. I can loan you the DVDs. Uh, this is its seventh and last season on HBO starting in a couple weeks. And the reason I bring it up is because amongst the cast of literally hundreds of different characters, it's a huge cast, there is a, a character named Jamie who is a knight. And he is the brother to the current queen. She's a pretty wicked queen. He's actually her twin. And Prior to her becoming queen, there was a, another king called Mad King Ares, because he was, this guy was crazy, he was a loon. And Jamie was one of the seven knights who were sworn to his protection, his king's guard. But he was so crazy, he was going to do so much to hurt and kill so many people at the end of the war that is right before the show starts, that Jamie kills him kills the man that he has sworn to protect, stabs him in the back of the sword. Believe it or not, this was the right and noble thing to do. This saved thousands, tens of thousands, maybe millions of lives. But most people didn't understand that. They didn't know what was about to happen if Jamie didn't do this. And so they called him Kingslayer. He still got to survive and to be a knight because his side won. But no one trusted him. No one believed him anymore. He was all but an outcast, even though he did the right thing. And because he had become an outcast, he really became pretty wicked. He would do almost anything for his sister and his family. But yet, in his deepest core, there's a spark decency, of honor, of what it meant to become a knight. And now, by the beginning of the seventh season, we start to see him turning around to actually live the way he should have all these years. He's the prodigal. He's the lost sheep returned to do the right thing. How many of you realize that one of the most famous movie franchises, and I know you've all heard of this even if you haven't all seen it, 
one of the most famous and successful franchises in the history of Hollywood, probably the most famous and the most successful, is basically the prodigal son story. Any idea which one I'm talking about? Anyone? Star Wars. Believe it or not, Star Wars is the story of the prodigal son. But it's told in the reverse. It's not the son who is lost and has to find redemption. It's the father. In the Star Wars movie, the son plays the role of the father in the gospel story. The father plays the role of the son. The father starts out as a good, as a good man, a knight again of light. He succumbs to darkness. He does terrible, wicked things. But his son, when he realizes who he is, because at first he thinks his father's dead, his son maintains that there is still good in him. He can feel it. Yes, he's evil. Yes, he's wicked. He's done terrible things. But there is a spark left. There is something that can be latched onto that is worth saving. And pretty much he spends almost the entirety of the third movie <clears throat> trying to save his father. And in the end, at the point of death, he does. The boy is about to be killed by the evil emperor who the father serves. And the father, seeing this, as his son calls out to him <clears throat> to save him, has pity again, has mercy, has sacrifice. And instead of letting his son die, he takes the mortal injury that we've killed him. And as he lays dying, and his son is trying to still save his life, the boy says to him, I must save you. I have to get you off this ship before it blows up. He says, Luke, you already have. Tell your sister you were right about me. There was still goodness left. If that's not hope, if that's not what we need to get through each and every day, I don't know what is. Because I know I know how wicked I've been. I know how much I've turned away from God for 17 years. I turned my back on God. I didn't need Him anymore. It wasn't that I was mad at Him. It wasn't that I hated Him or was upset with Him. I just didn't need Him. I was all grown up. I was wise. I was smart. I was world smart. I was doing well. What do I need God for? That was something from my youth. It was a nice thing when I was a child to have and to read the stories. Great. They helped make me who I am. Okay, but I'm there now. I don't need this anymore. You can all start laughing at any point. Because of course I needed God. Of course I was lost. And too blind and too stupid, too world-wrapped to realize it just didn't realize it. But there was still a spark left inside. I still helped people when I could. I still gave to charities when I could. Held the door open for people, carried stuff to their car for them. So often just reached down something from the top shelf of the supermarket because the little lady couldn't reach it. She said, oh, could you get that for me? Of course. It wasn't that I turned evil, per se. 
But I was embroiled in an evil, wicked world, and I was fine with it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it for what it was. I was okay. The things of the world became far more important than the things of God. I'd go to church now and then on Christmas or Easter, but that was it. Go to a christening, a wedding, that was it. I didn't need God. I was so lost. But God didn't give up on me. And he's never given up on any of you. And maybe you're lucky. Maybe your short time away from God was a, 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 just a moment. Maybe just a doubt. Maybe you spent years as well. I don't know. But I do know this. Even when we turn our back on God and we walk away, He never abandons us. He's with us every step of our journey. He shares every smile and every tear. Even when we don't want to let Him in, God is there. And He calls us, come home. Yeah, there might be a price to pay. But any justice that's going to be rendered, is going to be rendered with mercy and compassion. A lost child might have upset their parents, might have made them go frantic. But that is washed away by the love and the relief they have when they find them. And we are all God's lost children at some point or another. God is waiting with open arms to say, all is forgiven. Come home. Just come home. Don't worry about the mistakes you've made. Don't worry about the decisions or the choices. I love you. I love you so very much that I'll die for you. To save you from having to die in your own sin. I love you so very much that all I have is yours. It always has been and it always will be. And I rejoice at the return of the prodigal child. I rejoice at the resolution of hope and of love. And if your brothers and your sisters are jealous, I'll talk to them. Don't worry about it. We'll smooth it over. They'll come to understand because they love you too. You let me worry about that. Just come Because in the worst of us, there's always a spark. There's something that can be redeemed. There's something that God can latch on to and magnify. If, this is the important part, if we let it happen. Because if we keep our heart hardened, if we keep our back turned to God, if we keep saying no, Sorrowfully, painfully, God will acknowledge that choice. <coughs> he won't give up on us, but He will not force us to return home. He will not drag us kicking and screaming against our will, though He probably should. He'll honor our choice even when it hurts us and hurts Him. Don't hurt God. Love God. Love Him with all your heart, and with all your mind, and with all your soul, because that's what He, that's how He loves you. He's the ultimate champion rooting for the underdog. 
He wants to see us all not just survive, but to thrive. He wants us to see, wants to see us do great things. Not for our glory, but for His. He wants us to help our brothers and our sisters and bring them home to the Father. He wants heaven so filled They have to put a sign up that says, no more room at the end, but they'll still find a place for you. He wants hell empty. And he wants all his children at his feet. Isn't that what you want if you have a lost child? You don't care. You just want them home and safe. That's love. That's the Easter story. <coughs> That's what we're moving to in the next couple of weeks. So don't feel like you're not deserving, even though you aren't. Because none of us are. Don't feel like there's no more room at the end for you, or that you've squandered your chance. You haven't. Remember, God tells His children, forgive so many times that you've lost count of how many times you've forgiven. There is no limit. You don't just forgive seven times and say, that's it, I gave them seven chances. You forgive seven times 70. A number so big, most people back then couldn't count that high. That's why they used that number. Just keep forgiving and keep loving because that's how God will be towards you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please take a moment and let these words settle on your soul. And let them find good fertile to nurturing ground. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we know that there are so many lost in the world. We know that we've been lost in the world. We know that some of us may be lost this very moment. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you throw open and wide your arms and you wrap us in them. That you wrap all your people and all your children, wherever they may be, in all their situations, in your arms of love and tenderness and forgiveness and justice and mercy. We ask, Lord, that you care for us so deeply that we are humbled by it. We are moved to tears by it. And that these tears, mingled with your blood, cleanse us and make us fit to be your children once again. Hear now, Lord, the prayers that we raise up. Even though we know they're already upon your heart, you're already at work in them. Still, if we can help, if we can be part of the solution, Lord, we pray, let us be. Bring Shane home, son, Father. Bring him home safe. And continue prayers for grace on her recovery. Amen. Thank you, Lord. With Father David, as he leaves his church, he moves on with his life. Be with those in our families that cannot hear and cannot see, that you would draw them close to your salvation through the cross.
Heavenly Father, we praise your name. And we pray these prayers, knowing that laying them at the foot of the cross and putting them into your care is our ultimate hope and salvation. In Christ's holy name, amen. amen. Now let us take this opportunity to return to God a portion of that which he has blessed us with.
shine upon you and lift his countenance up upon thee, and may he give you peace, now and forever. Go forth in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and be a repentant, prodigal people who come home to the Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you.